live from the studio in the Netherlands. It's my great pleasure to welcome you all for participating in the EU ISEX conference 2020. My name is Annemarie Zielstra and I'm your moderator this afternoon. Today's conference is about building a resilient EU ISEX infrastructure together. And we last three hours. The conference is organized by the European Commission and uh, ENISA and organized by the Empowering EU ISEX Consortium. For this conference, we have made an agenda which will guide you through the developments within the European Commission and specifically on the topic EU ISEX. We are happy to have so many valuable speakers and welcome more than 175 participants dialing in from at least 34 countries. An impressive result. We couldn't have reached it in a session offline. And before we start, I'd like to stress some housekeeping matters. Please note that you are watching this conference from a live stream in the environment of WorksUp. This means that there is a one-way communication between you and us. Within WorksUp, there are a few features to make yourself heard. Use the Q&A for raising questions or addressing comments. My colleagues and I will keep track of the chat and will notify the speakers for questions posed there. We will try to address all of the questions depending on the amount and time. And for some other features, I come back to you at two o'clock before the break. Also, please note that this session will be recorded for reporting purposes. We may also take a photo for LinkedIn. So if you have any objections, please notify the consortium. One last disclaimer is that we are working with new technology. So the unexpected can always occur. In that case, please bear with us and know that we have a backup program in mind. And with that, I'd like to hand over to Miguel Gonzalez, head of unit at the European Commission's Cybersecurity technology and capacity building. To give his opening speech, Mr. Miguel Gonzalez, the floor is yours. And please unmute yourself. I see that also. Good afternoon, can you hear me? Um, good afternoon to everyone, to all the uh, participants. Um, uh, uh, to this uh, to this conference today, <clears throat> I will. Um, I, uh, I am from the European Commission, as it has been said, and I it is my pleasure to say some words um, <clears throat> regarding uh, to open this conference. Uh, what I will do very succinctly, I will put this uh, conference of today and the project uh, which is uh, which is organizing the conference in the context of um, of uh, European policy on cybersecurity. <clears throat> Next slide, please. <clears throat> so uh, the moment we are uh, living now, June 2020, it's of course very, very particular. As uh, you all know, we don't need to, uh, <clears throat> I don't need to, to dwell, to, to, to expand on that. But um, the message uh, to pass here is that um, the importance of digital and with that the importance of cybersecurity has only been uh, further stressed uh, in the recent times uh, with this experience of, of, of COVID and confinement and over-dependence on, uh, on digital uh, technology, communications, information. Um, from the side of the Commission, <clears throat> of course, uh, you know, we've been very active in, in addressing the, uh, the uh, you know, the immediate uh, uh, kind of challenges of the crisis and then also preparing for the future. Um, and in that respect, the, um, there's a series of, of, of proposals that have been put on the table from the European Commission in the recent times. And um, 
it is very clear that this uh, message that the recovery and the future has to be will be digital it's something that comes uh, across very strong and as i said before with the importance of digital comes the importance of cyber whether this is in terms of uh, better connectivity uh, of uh, industrial capacity of europe of uh, building up a data economy uh, and of course of being resilient uh, with all of that the uh, the role of cybersecurity becomes uh, ever more prominent next slide please <clears throat> So, as I said, putting this conference and this project in the context of uh, cybersecurity policy of the European Union, I would simplify a lot by saying that there are two axes of uh, axes of that policy: coordination, and then what uh, we could call capabilities and building up an internal market of cybersecurity. Uh, at the very at the present time, the important aspects uh, around coordination <coughs> are. Of course, uh, all the efforts uh, that exist at the European level to align uh, cooperation, in particular between member states, but not only. Uh, and there we have an important instrument, which is the NIST Directive, uh, Network and Information Systems uh, Security Directive, which is up for review uh, by the end of this year. And there's also a series of other initiatives that exist uh, on which we uh, are building up at the European level, the cyber blueprint, the announcement of a joint cyber unit, the recommendation on uh, 5G security and so forth. I won't go into that. As I said, the threat of all of that is to reinforce uh, the uh, coordination, the collaboration element when it comes to cyber security uh, activity action at European level. And then second, we have the aspect of, as I said, capabilities and building up an internal market uh, a resilient internal market in, in terms of cyber security. And there we can see that, okay, in, in, in various sectors, this dimension of digitization and cyber security is, is coming, uh, becoming stronger. We have a European certification framework for cyber security, which an import, it's an important uh, new uh, instrument at European level. We do have a series of programs that support innovation, deployment capabilities in the area of uh, uh, cyber security, in particular the Horizon 2020 for research and innovation, Horizon 2020 program that would be followed up in future by the future Horizon Europe program. Today we have the Connecting Europe facility digital that also supports uh, cyber security and in future there will be the digital program. And then we have on the table a proposal for the creation of a cyber security uh, uh, competence center and network. And this takes me to my last slide, uh, my next slide, sorry, <clears throat> which is one of the programs I just mentioned, which is the Connecting Your Facility um, uh, Digital. Connecting Your Facility, it's a program that supports basically, well, it supports three areas of European policy, um, transport, energy, and digital and within digital uh, there's a range of objectives and cyber security is one of them and we have two sets of actions basically projects uh, supporting uh, uh, you know uh, different uh, projects across uh, across various uh, aspects of cyber security and also uh, more horizontal support actions uh, uh, that such as the, pro, the, the the project which is uh, uh, organizing this conference, what we call core service uh, core service uh, platforms. Um, <clears throat> this uh, there will be uh, tomorrow actually there will be another call of CEF Cyber. Uh, so watch the space. Uh, there will be more opportunities for for support um, from from CEF. This will be the last call of uh, of safe cyber um as you know with the new multi-channel fashion framework that will be the end of uh, new uh, of the calls from safe and from horizon 2020 and other programs will follow next slide please <clears throat> so as i think i mentioned before the uh, there is a project a european project supported by the CEF digital uh, cyber uh, uh objective uh, and this is the project on the ISACS uh, facilities manager, which is uh, which is uh, organizing this conference. 
um, what is the purpose of having this this project that as I said before the it's one of the safe projects which is a horizontal one which is there to basically support uh, support uh, efforts um, <clears throat> Rather than than uh, than uh, funding a particular consortium in, in 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 three countries or so, this is this is European uh, perspective. So the uh, the project will be of course explained into uh, in, in more detail a bit uh, a bit later. But uh, as I said, I wanted to put this in the context of European policy. What is the purpose? The purpose is uh, to uh, to support further what I mentioned before in terms of, 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 of coordination and capacities. And in this particular uh, case, it is about mobilizing uh, public and private actors uh, input, uh, to support, uh, to sorry, to, to establish uh, new ISACs or to reinforce the existing uh, ones. Of course, very much uh, in the um, related to this is the need to, uh, to, to support coordination in some uh, critical sectors. Uh, that are in particular referred in the NIS uh, is that directive. We are uh, from the Commission very closely uh, uh, cooperating with ENISA on this. ENISA, who has been uh, quite active for some time in this space of the ISACs, and we will hear a bit more uh, from ENISA. Next slide. So just to conclude, what is that? Uh, that is what we're aiming. With, uh, with supporting this, this work of uh, ISAC's establishment and reinforcement. So basically, the idea is to reinforce, uh, you know, coordination, cooperation, collaboration across uh, between relevant actors in the area of cybersecurity and uh, with uh, also aiming to support uh, uh, the, um, uh, the operators of essential services, which is a key piece uh, of the uh, NIST directive, as many of uh, you know. So um, uh, I will end up here. My main message is that this, uh, this collaboration across Europe in terms of cybersecurity, which ISACs uh, as a concept, as an instrument, support, it's at the core of uh, uh, taking further um, European policy uh, on, on, on cyber security. With that, I hope that today's conference will contribute in precisely uh, that goal, taking a collaboration in cyber security further in Europe. Thank you very much. <clears throat> and thank you, Mikael. And now I'd like to hand over to Evangelis Uzunis of ENISA, who already dialed in. And also, uh, already mentioned by Miguel, collaboration between European Commission and NISA is very important in the field of cybersecurity and setting up ISACs specifically at the European level. Vangelis, please, and welcome. Hi, Anna Marie. It's a pleasure to see you remotely. It's a, uh, thank you very much for inviting me and uh, thank you for organizing this. Uh, extraordinary event <laughs> indeed uh, information security information sharing and analysis uh, centers are an important topic uh, you know this very well yourself you have been working on this matter for many many years and uh, we at enisa were many times inspired by the good work that you personally have done in this uh, area so information sharing and analysis centers are uh, basically a more structural way of sharing information, a good way of uh, talking to each other, exchanging information about uh, topics uh, related to incidents, for example, good practices and so on. And uh, I guess uh, a lot of the people who have joined together today are familiar with the idea. So what this project is trying to do and what Enisa is basically promoting with this uh, study, with this conference and with this, uh, let's say, work is uh, that we need to work together. We need to collaborate better. We need to share information uh, more often. And this is a prerequisite for becoming uh, more up to speed with the latest developments. And the level of information to be exchanged is at different levels of abstraction. It can be very technical. It can be at policy level. It can be a tactical level. We can share information about the incidents. We can share information about uh, how we, for example, prepare a business continuity. What are the lessons learned from exercises and other matters? So, and there are there is some experience on uh, Isaacs. Uh, 
uh, experience from a few countries, but also from a few sectors. And uh, basically, the consortium will also solicit input. Uh, we'll try to get feedback, you know, from all colleagues to understand uh, what is the best way forward. Um, and NISA has recognized this topic, you know, since long. So I think many years we have uh, actually preached the importance of information sharing uh, the opportunity to learn from each other and um, the last years uh, we are very happy to see that the commission also took on board the concept and uh, has sponsored this project you know and giving enough money and enough resources and also through this project we hope that many communities will emerge and uh, hopefully this project will leave a legacy behind so that these communities can basically take advantage of the opportunity and continue sharing even after the end of the project. So uh, Isaacs is not only for uh, private sector, is not only for public sector, is uh, ideally a combination of public and private sector. It is also very important to somehow recognize, you know, a few important concepts, uh, the role of the people who participate, the, the size, the, the technical means, the focus, and others, uh, other elements that will be explained and will be discussed in today's conference. And I'm sure that in the breakout session, there will be a lot of discussion. But um, if something uh, will remain, you know, from my intervention today is first that we can become better by sharing. Second, uh, sharing uh, actually uh, happens all the time. Even in today's conference, we do sharing. And when we drink coffee and we discuss, we also do sharing. But there is a more structural way of sharing information, and that is the Isaac. And third, there is a lot of uh, knowledge on the topic, and we can learn from it. We don't need to rediscover the wheel. And fourth, uh, this consortium is going to develop also some IT tools that will become available you know, for, uh, for the different communities that they would like to embark on this trip. So these are uh, some of the of the elements, you know, that I wanted to highlight. So please um, listen carefully, contribute to the discussion. Don't miss the opportunity to appreciate, you know, the the importance of the topic, and uh, relate with the consortium and if and NISA and of course the Commission uh, will be very happy to further, you know, understand your needs and try to focus. Better. So in this call, several NISA colleagues uh, actually have joined and they are going to participate in the breakout sessions. I would like to thank them personally you know, for, for doing this. And we are going to learn also ourselves you know, from, from this. So thank you again, Anna Marie. Thank you again, Consortium, for giving me the opportunity. And we look forward you know, to a very interesting uh, session today. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Vangelis. And again, thank you, uh, Miguel and Vangelis, for this introduction. The importance of various initiatives uh, taken by the European Commission and TENISA, along as mentioned by Vangelis, by its public and private partners, cannot be expressed enough, as they help those who are building their maturity on the information sharing and strengthening their national resilience in a collaborative European context. And now I would like to introduce you to two experienced members of the Energy and Rail ISAC on their most memorable moments in the last few years of the existing of their ISACs and talk about the importance of information sharing the pitfalls and successes. We have them dialed in into the studio. Um, so let's see if they're already in. Hello, Massimo. Hello, Olivier. Are you in? Yes, they are in the studio right now. Yes, so we are. Thank you. I'd like <laughs> to introduce you. Welcome. Welcome this afternoon, Massimo and Olivier. I start with Massimo. Massimo Rocca, he's board member and founder of the European Energy ISAC. He works for Enel Group in the strategy area of the cybersecurity department after 18 years spent coordinating security and cybersecurity 
policy definition on critical infrastructure protection and managing relations with authorities and in institutions at the national and international level. And before going into the first question, I'd like to introduce you the other gentleman in the call, Olivier. Hello, Olivier. Hello, good afternoon. Olivier de Fischer has 20 years plus experience in various IT infrastructure of international organizations of all size and various sectors. He has nearly seven years of experience in information security and about five years in the industrial world. As a former CISO of the Belgian infrastructure manager, he has noticed that most of the challengers are not national, but cross borders. In his opinion, a strong EU collaboration to be able to tackle most of the challenges is necessary. This also led to his willingness to dedicate more time to their sectoral cybersecurity. A warm welcome to the both of you. And as said, this is a fast paced Q&A. <laughs> so first question, Massimo, how were the very first steps back in the day? Did everything go as smooth as planned? Thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, well, yeah, Isaac has a particular story. When uh, we began, it began uh, as a European project in uh, 2012. Uh, it was a, a project called Densec, uh, specifically to build a network uh, of trust and to create a kind of Isaac. Uh, at the time, we didn't have a clear idea on what is, what is an Isaac. The project lasted uh, three years. And uh, we had uh, organized different meetings, especially in, uh, in the Netherlands. We went to Amsterdam and uh, we had meetings involving more uh, than 20 people in each meeting coming uh, from European operators, universities, uh, public agencies uh, and solution providers. And also Enisa took part to these uh, meetings uh, to help us uh, supporting the discussion on the upcoming ISAC. And this, uh, this project was particularly important for us because it was a key phase when uh, we, we drafted the, the first documents that are the skeleton, the rule of the game within the, the ISAC. And it helped us to define the technical specification also for our supporting platform. So this was a really important uh, moment uh, and uh, it permitted us to create the ISAC that lasted the uh, other five years uh, after the, the project. Okay, and Olivier, how was this uh, for you? Well, uh, first thing we did four years ago, um, we we all knew that it was an important uh, thing to work together, at least, uh, you know, with the periphery of Belgium. We wanted to work on uh, officializing the collaboration through, uh, you know, the way we were together, and we wanted to document that through a term of reference. That was important to start with. Um, and of course, uh, we, were want, we wanted also to work on, on the gain. Um, what was the, the gain uh, we, we could get? And that was to, to get the trust among ourselves and the community. Uh, that was very, very important. Uh, we, we looked at the Energy Act uh, to get inspiration for uh, getting the, the term of reference right, so that we have the proper way of working documented, everybody agrees on. We also defined uh, what the objectives are for, for the Isaac. So uh, that was for us the, the very first thing we thought about. Indeed, um, a very important aspect, not reinventing the wheel to keep the momentum. Um, I stay with you, Olivier, uh, for the next question. What were your most memorable moments? Well, we certainly had a lot. Uh, but the, the most memorable one was um, actually the, the birth of the Isaac itself, which happened in a place that I was to be surprised. We were in London in the first conference on the rail on cybersecurity. My colleague at the time from the Dutch rail operator NS raised the interest in collaborating in that field. On that day, uh, I wouldn't believe that 
with our German colleagues at Deutsche Bahn, we would have a couple of months later, with the help of the, the EU Rail Agency and EU Cybersecurity Agency, uh, we would have about 40 people on table to meet and talk about the birth of the cybersecurity uh, organization that we've done now, which basically is the ISAC. That was really to me uh, a, a smashing moment because we could see immediately that everybody had the same interest and I was very enthusiastic uh, to work together through collaboration. Okay, Massimo, do you recognize this moment in your respective Isaac progress? We we had I would say we had many memorable moments uh, with the Isaac uh, because uh, uh, for us the network of trust is a really important value and uh, it's what's enable all the Isaac activities. So when we organize uh, an event for the Isaac, we try to create uh, these uh, memorable moments uh, uh, to create a strong relationship among our members and to build uh, this mutual trust. Uh, in fact, in the, in the past four years, uh, we organized uh, three plenaries uh, per year and uh, uh, we, we select one of the members that were going to was going to to host the events and uh, beside the, the, the plenary we tried also to organize a small uh, visit uh, to the city a small visit to the operators premises in order to turn our events into a memorable moment uh, i have also to to highlight a specific moment in our history it was when uh, in 2018 uh, we presented our association uh, at the European Parliament during the Cybersecurity Week. Uh, we met our stakeholders uh, and the other association in the Gaspari Room. So this was an, icon an iconic moment. But as said, all our events are important uh, for, for the association. Okay, thank you both. Uh, and I can imagine that memorable moment. Uh, that's really yeah, exciting. Um, next question is about the ways you work within your ISEC. Uh, please keep your answers short. Uh, Massimo, what are your unique ways of working within the ISEC? And are there any recent successes from this way of working? We try to, to, to leverage on the network of trust, as said. Uh, we uh, allow our members to interact directly, exchange information uh, during conferences, plenaries. We have uh, all the network phones. Uh, uh, and, uh, and I think this is important. The, the, the day by day is, is important, is a success for us, being able to interact uh, when there is something uh, that, that we need to exchange uh, in a trusted way. We can act uh, uh, in a formal network uh, using also informal ways, but we had uh, we have uh, these terms or references, the rules, uh, the traffic light protocols that teach us how to exchange information the most secure way uh, uh, respectfully also uh, of the different uh, sensitivity that we have in our groups. So it's a day by day yeah. success for us. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, Olivier, is this different for the real ISEC? Well, a little bit different. Uh, in the real sector, we we certainly have a lot of challenges in front of us. So we decided to uh, focus on uh, gathering all the projects, all the initiatives that are ongoing in the sector in cybersecurity, so that we have a, a very good roadmap and we see exactly who does what to avoid duplications. Uh, we know the cyber security, we could get all the domains all together. Everybody could work on his own. Uh, in, in the real, we are well known to work in silo. In cyber security, we want to be an example to actually stop working in silos and share the work among the member so that we have an overview of what needs to be done. And actually, everybody's working on, uh, on this part and share back to the community so we can share the experience and intelligence. In short, uh, the key to success is how to learn to defy to work and uh, keep a good governance. Um, clear. Last question, uh, Massimo. Um, how do you envision the future? Uh, well, uh, when we started with the Isaac, uh, we started creating task forces. We were dedicating and spending our time to many topics in the field of uh, cybersecurity and critical infrastructure protection. But then the, the, the world around us changed. Uh, there were many other 
um, communities, uh, in the, especially in the energy sector, that, uh, that started dealing with policy definition, with man, many other topics. So we dis discovered it was important to refocus ourselves on our very mission, that is information sharing and analysis. And so uh, this, is, this is our must now uh, to improve our capabilities. And thanks to this uh, European project that are starting now, the activity of the consortium, uh, we can improve our capabilities. So for us, the future is uh, uh, keeping on with it for sharing and improve our analysis. Okay. And Olivier, how, how is this for you? Well, we basically want to, um, you know, now that we gathered uh, enough support and we got the EU bodies with us and we thank you very much, the Commission, and we thank you very much, uh, indeed, the, the agencies that are behind us. We have a lot uh, of very good support from the members in this tree. We're looking now at actually making the ISAC a community where it's a central point of contact for the information that you need in specific fields uh, and, and so that you can contact then the right persons about the right subjects and right intelligence. It's a big challenge, but we are sure we can do that with a strong digital platform and also a strong community of trust. And we are getting there. Okay, thank you, Massimo and Miguel. Um, Olivier, for these uh, lively and inspiring stories, um, it gives us all food for thought during this conference. And uh, we will now have a 15 minutes break and go to our breakout sessions at quarter past two. Before, I will give a short introduction on each breakout. As I mentioned earlier, I will stress some housekeeping matters to you. Next to the Q&A, you've probably also seen the profile feature. This is a networking feature for networking purposes. When you have created your profile and stated your interest, you can start searching for matches. Propose a meeting and have a one-on-one -on -one talk with someone you like to meet. You can even video conference using this feature. In the agenda tab, there are a few other features you can access. There are the Q&A button, tasks and media. The Q&A is self-explanatory. Tasks and are questions sent from us for you to answer and to get familiarized, please fill in where you are from and how you watch today's session. And now I will take a moment to introduce the session to you. We have four breakouts. In the first breakout, and there they are on the screen, how to start by Capgemini and Spark Legal Network. You will be shared a checklist to get up, up and running and more concretely provide next steps of shaping your ISACs via blueprints. This is presented by Foco Dijksterhuis and Peter McNally. The second breakout, Ways of Working by TNO will focus on the daily operations of EU ISAC members. A vision of next generation ISACs, lessons learned, good practices and experience will be shared by Johan Rambi and Tom van Schie. Third, the third breakout will focus on information sharing by consortium's expert group and Cap Germany. Lessons learned, good practices, and the Dutch approach on information sharing will be shared by Nienke Steging from the Dutch National Cybersecurity Center and Roland de Koning. And lastly, one generic IT platform by Cap Germany and Interstroft is a journey through the considerations of the proposed generic IT platform for ISACs. Do you need the light or the full platform and why? 
Join them and find out. Presented by Mar Bart van Riel and Reza Malik. So, these are the four breakout sessions. Um, we will meet again at the quarter past three for the lessons learned by the CEF project PISAX. And now we will have our 15 minutes break and um, I wish you a great time uh, joining uh, the sessions and uh, see you later. Thank you all. Bye bye. Yeah. Yes, all right, sorry to interrupt. Uh, we do have a few minutes left for discussing the Q&A questions which have been sent in and they uh, were about the sessions presented by Massimo and Olivier. Um, we would like to hand, handle them right away. Uh, I believe you are still in the session uh, dialed in, Massimo and Olivier. Uh, yes, I'm in. Yes, great. Any uh, practical recommendation for uh, for for a group that thinks about creating an Isaac at this moment. Yeah, I would I would personally say the experience we had and we shared with uh, Maritime, um, the, the importance in creating the uh, uh, the community is really to have the right ideas to start slow. Uh, to get documentation about how you guys will work together. It's very important to, to be clear on the rules. And the third aspect would be really to, to get trust indeed, uh, starting slowly, you know, demonstrating a little bit that what kind of information we exchange. So it reassures procurement, reassure the legal parties, um, and, and understanding if you are in a private public partnership or, in, or only in, let's say, fully in private which makes more easy to collaborate. Um, that is for me the key important steps, I would say, to start building a, a community of trust. Yes. Well, thank you. That was uh, very clear and concise. Uh, Massimo, do you have anything to add to this? Yeah, uh, th there are many questions uh, uh, around the kind of Isaac we would like to set up uh, when we started with the DENSEC project. As said, we had uh, three years uh, to, to answer to these questions. And uh, one of the questions, since we were going to create a public-private cooperation, as uh, already an important starting point when we decided this, uh, and also the, the, the kind of relationship that, the, that we wanted to establish, uh, for example, with the regulators, uh, uh, because our organizations are, are uh, strictly bound to their to their context and uh, the risk to create parallel information channel is a concrete risk. So uh, I agree with Olivier, it is important to have uh, uh, precise, uh, well-written rules, uh, and uh, unfortunately is something necessary and time spending, but the new Isaac must invest time at the beginning to develop the right uh, foundation documents, the terms or references. Yes, and investing those time is well worth it in the end, you say? Yeah. Because you uh, commit yourself to a longer partnership than just a project. All right. Uh, the other question that has been risen is how do you interact with international Isaacs or Isaacs from other regions? And perhaps this requires a little bit of context. We have people not only dialed in from uh, the European countries, but also outside of that. Uh, so for instance, uh, do you have any uh, networking activities with uh, outside of Europe? I can, I can answer to this question. Yes, so we have a long time partnership with the US e Isaac and the Japanese GE Isaac. Uh, it took time also in these cases in order to make this relationship working in terms of information sharing. Uh, we have to consider that, that in our association, we, we also uh, had the fortune to, to of the participation of ENISA. That was uh, uh, something important to, to define at least general guidelines uh, uh, and the behavior our organization must uh, must have uh, with those uh, external parties. But in any case, uh, it's important also from uh, awareness point of view, from the situational awareness point of view, uh, to, to create this relationship, this contact with them. And it's also important because, uh, uh, for example, in the case of US Isaac, they have a lot of experience uh, and they helped us understanding how to describe uh, 
uh, the threads, how to describe the artifacts, everything that is related to our analysis capabilities. So uh, it's also a kind of standardization process that you may consider as uh, one of the core streams in, in your Isaacs if you want to, to uh, create content that can be uh, analyzed in the future. No? Uh, it's a met methodological path you have to follow to, to create your uh, capabilities. Yes, in, in that sense, and hello world, by the way, uh, in that sense, you can learn a lot from other Isaacs, which are perhaps different in maturity. Uh, Olivier, how is this for you? Because the railway is uh, a bit younger. Yes, yes, and that's exactly the, the, the good point. Uh, the, in the fact that we are younger, we decided to look at what the other Isaacs are doing. In Europe, Isaac is a very new thing, you know, uh, so we didn't have a lot of examples there. So we had to look what's happening in the world. Uh, so indeed, we uh, saw that finance Isaac in the world is well established and we learn a lot from them. We also learn from Energy Isaac, as I mentioned, uh, during with the support of the uh, European uh, Agency on Cybersecurity, ENISA, we had the uh, chance to meet the other Isaac and those who are actually in being built. And I was looking at bridges to strengthen some, some of the uh, expertise we don't have in field like energy, SCADAs and things, to share it with the energy, Isaac, to share with maritime, to share with aviation about legacy systems. So looking at the good systems that we could, we don't have resources or we, we could help as well. So we're looking at the bridges. For international organizations, which are not Isaacs, we are now contributing to United Nations. But it's it's not an Isaac itself, but it's another international organization, of course, that we we contribute because they also need uh, a lot of experience. It all depends on the field of information you want to exchange. Is it on the ministerial level or national level uh, or operational level? That all depends what we like to to share. But we are young indeed, and, and we get what we can from where we can. Yes, great, and uh, thank you for for your answers both. Um, these were the answers or the questions that were posed online uh, and with that we now arrive at our break. So uh, as Annemarie already explained to you before this uh, short Q&A and our apologies uh, that we uh, didn't have them right after the session with uh, Olivier and Massimo. But Olivier, Massimo, thank you so much uh, for your participation in this uh, Congress. We will see you again at the Q&A at uh, half past three uh, Central European time. And uh, before that, we would like to invite all the participants to join a breakout. Uh, and those will start at a quarter past two. And we can put up the slide for the PowerPoint. Yes, it's time for a quick break. Live in the studio again, and welcome back everyone. I hope you enjoyed your breakout sessions. And uh, also, I see a lot of activity going on in the workshop environment. 118 people already are active and made their profile and started to network with each other. So that's really great. So before we go um, further with the networking part and the interactive session, um, we start with uh, a new speaker and uh, with me, you already see a new face on the screen. This is uh, Mr. Uh, Nicolas uh, de Beff. Uh, welcome, Nicolas, good to have you here. Um, and Nicolas is uh, from a very young Isaac, the Pisaks. Um, you've quite a story to tell. Um, you have lots of lessons learned and you're eager to share your experience with us, which is very great. So um, you will guide us the next 15 minutes through your presentation. And, um, and we hope to learn from you and uh, hear about your pitfalls and successes. Nicolas, uh, welcome again and um, Happy to hear your stories. Thank you, Anne-Marie. Yeah, so let's start. Um, my name is Nicolas de Beff, as already said. Um, I'm working for LUKIX, which, which is the internet exchange point in Luxembourg, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the PISAX initiative. 
So, what is PISAX? PISAX stands for Pan-European Information Sharing and Analysis for Internet Exchange Point and GPRS Rooming Exchanges. It's a safe telecom funding program co-financed by the European Union. What is the objective of PISAX? The objective is to create an information sharing and analysis center in order to support Internet Exchange Point and GPRS Rooming Exchange. That's fine, but now the question is, what is an Internet Exchange Point? An Internet Exchange Point is a network infrastructure that interconnects locally at national level content consumers, in most of the case, the Internet service provider customers and content provider, Internet caches like Google Cache, Facebook, Akamai, etc. What is now a GPRS roaming exchange? It's also a network infrastructure dedicated to mobile device roaming connectivity. So to summarize, we want to put in place an automated and secure threat intelligence sharing system for those communities. Now, what is our strategy to build the ISAC? We plan to gather IXPs and JRX community around a threat intelligence sharing platform. And the sharing platform we have chosen is the MISP threat sharing platform. We also want to create dedicated instance of that MISP platform for both communities. Now, who is behind PISAX initiative? We have Post Luxembourg, Lukix, and Security Made in LU. What is Post Luxembourg? Post Luxembourg is the national historical telecom operator, but Post has also an important background in cybersecurity, with the Post Cyber Force dedicated team, which delivers managed security services, performance tests, SOC, and C cert activity. Post is also an important contributor to MISP threat sharing. But the most important point in the PISAX project is that POST is member of the GSM Alliance and also an active contributor to the Information Sharing and Analysis Center GSME groups. In the context of PISAX, the main role of POST is to strengthen the ISAC JRX community and enhance the platform automation. What is LUKIX? As already said, LUKIX is, the, is an internet exchange point in Luxembourg. LUKIX is also a member of the EuroIX, which is an internet exchange point association that gather about 20, uh, 70 IXPs around the world. In the PISAX uh, project, the role of LUKIX is to coordinate the PISAX project, but also to build the ISAX IXP community. LUKIX is also supporting LUNOG, Luxembourg Network Operator Group, which is a technical discussion group. Beside these technical um, activities, LUKIX, LUKIX has also some promotional activity in the Luxembourg Internet Days, which is our annual conference held in November and dedicated to network security, cloud security, and crisis management topics. And by the way, this year, this conference will be completely virtual. So if you are interested, please register. Last but not least, we are also currently setting up a national data scrubbing center, which has been requested by the Luxembourg government and which is a security measure meant to mitigate high bandwidth volumetric DDoS attacks in order to protect the country. What is security made in LU? Security Made in LU is a brand, and under this brand, we have three pillars. First pillar, the most important one in the context of the PISAX project, is Circle.lu. Circle is the computer incident center uh, in Luxembourg, mainly uh, dedicated to the private sector. But these guys also lead the MISP deploy, uh, development since 2011 and operate multiple sharing platform in different sectors. In the context of PISAX, they will help in the PISAX platform deployment and will ensure PISAX sustainability after the SEF grant. Second pillar cases.lu, 
which delivers cybersecurity awareness and develop and support Monarch, which is a risk analysis methodology and platform. Finally, the Cybersecurity Competence Center Luxembourg, under which we find uh, the Room 42, which is a cyber attack scenario simulation dedicated to training of incident response teams. Now, status about the PISAC project. What has happened the last nine months? Well, we have started the project in September 2019. We had the kickoff and also Post Luxembourg attended uh, the GSMA Fraud and Security Group meeting where they made some presentation about the MISP platform. I personally attended the 35th Eurix Forum where I had my first contact with the Eurix board in order to explain a little bit what we were doing with the PISAX project. And they gave, uh, they gave me the opportunity to tease about PISAX in front of the present IXPs. We had also several uh, PISAX uh, team workshop in order to evidence how to create uh, interest of the communities within the platform. Yeah, because during this conference, some the same question uh, arose. It was sharing yes, but sharing what? During that time, we had also some development of automated feed plugins for the platform, the Git Vuln Finder that can be found on GitHub. And in January 2020, we finally found some uh, ideas about what to share within the platform. We, de we decided to feed the platform with vulnerabilities information because both communities share same kind of assets, same kinds of applications and protocol. So we had the idea to, um, in an automated way, feed automatically the platform with, for instance, vulnerability on networking networking devices, switches and router, but also a common application, BIRD, OpenBGP, IXP Manager, and some protocol, SS7, BGP, VXLAN, and EVPN. And as I said, we try to have these as automated as possible. In February 2020, we had some marketing activity, and at that time, we have a brand new logo. March 2020, things are getting a little bit complicated. We have the COVID-19 containment that starts. The 36th Eurix Forum is definitively postponed and later will be cancelled, but the project must go on. And in March, we had our first intermediate report sent to INEA in order to give them a status about the project. April 2020, we start compliance activity a little bit later than expected due to the pandemic situation. We start compliance assessment against local legal net, uh, framework, and we wrote some documents like organizational setup of PISAX and data protection for PISAX. Now we have this, this document, but we have to disseminate it. So at that time, we built also our new website, pisax.org which is accessible on the internet. May 2020, right, we have to refocus a little bit on project dissemination. Most of conference have, have canceled, some have switched to virtual, but not all. And at that time, we have decided to have our own virtual training. And for that, Eurix helped us a lot in accessing the IXP community. Um, also, during the, the training, we wanted that the user have some hands on the platform. So the PISAX platform at that time is also ready and accessible on the Internet, which is an important grant agreement milestone that is completed. In June 2020, and it was last week, we had our PISAX virtual training for the Eurix member, and it was pretty a success. We had about 10 IXPs around Europe that have attended the webinar. And by the end of the, the training, we had, an, we had some interesting discuss, dis, interested discussions. For the end of the, the month, I still have to finalize some compliance activity milestone. What are now the next steps? OK, we want to organize another uh, PISAX virtual training, this time focus on the JRX community, and it's planned in July 2020. Regarding PISAC's information dissemination, yeah, we, we are still observing how the, the pandemic situation will evolve and try to attend some virtual conference or 
physical conference if it's possible in the future. The work in progress, we're still working on evidencing valuable information to share. We plan to start brainstorm activity with the IXP communities, and we have set up a dedicated mailing list in order to discuss this. And this was following the, the discussion that we had by the, the end of, of the virtual training. And in October 2020, further alignment with the Empowering Europe PISAX project on facilitation of PISAX and support to PISAX. Now, the lessons learned. Well, on the technical uh, deployment point of view, uh, the deployment of the platform was straightforward because Circle is mastering the MISP software. Regarding the security information sharing, it's a pretty new concept in the IXP community, so we are facing the usual difficulties like trust, but also some legal pretexts or information leakage pretexts. The main question, as I already said, is that arose within the community was sharing yes, but sharing what? And we plan to have a discussion within uh, some dedicated mailing list in order to, to figure that out. And we want to find also way, ways to tease the interest in the platform in order to achieve this. The strategy was to have the community use the platform in order to adopt it. And for that, we have um, uh, done some uh, automated feed injection uh, with open source security information. And we, play, we, we also plan to have several hands-on training on the platform. And that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you, Nicolas. Quite an inspiring story. And you showed us that you can make progress uh, also during a COVID-19 period. Um, so a lot of progress, I can say, during the past nine months, also in developing uh, online trainings and move forward. So we can all learn from you. And also as a empowering EU ISEX consortium, we are looking forward. Uh, we are looking forward to support you uh, in growing maturity for uh, the next years. So um, we can learn from you and uh, thank you for um, showing um, uh, your projects and um, the steps you made um, in the past periods. So thank you and looking forward to work with you in the near future. Thank you. Our next part, uh, ladies and gentlemen, will focus on um, Q and A, and that will be an, uh, also an interactive session. So we have already selected questions from uh, the audience, and we will address them to our speakers and uh, breakout leaders, um, which presented them today. So uh, after all, this conference is also uh, on starting the dialogue, getting to learn from each other, um, to exchange experiences um, and learn together. Uh, so if I look at the computer screen, um, I see um, questions have already ar arisen on the screen. Um, the first question is the following. Cyber crises are as likely geographic as sectoral in nature. How to establish relations with peer ISACs in the EU? Um, maybe uh, Massimo, um, would you like uh, to answer this question? Well, uh, can you hear me? Yes, you can turn on your webcams, please. All right. Okay, yeah. now I see you. <laughs> um, so the first question okay. is for you. Yes, um, if uh, if an, any any organization within our sector needs to get in contact in contact with us, 
Um, it's easy. We have our rules uh, to to be approached by other uh, both operators, uh, social providers, as well as local organizations. Uh, we are also working to uh, federate with the uh, local Isaac. We would like to get in touch with local Isaac because uh, we think that it is a win-win uh, approach that we can put in place. Uh, but it's something that we are still uh, working on. Uh, in any case, uh, we we are open to to any organization uh, in in our sector in order to um, share with uh, with this organization uh, our terms of references. L let them understand how the European Isaac works. Uh, we organize a, a close session for members, but also open house. Uh, a session for a uh, new organization that want to approach the Isaac to 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 learn uh, our our way to to share information as well as uh, uh, to participate to webinars and trainings that we organize. So I, I think uh, that uh, there are plenty of ways to get in touch with uh, with European Isaac, with European Energy Isaac. Okay, thank you, thank you Massimo. Uh, Luke, is it possible to have the former question uh, back again on the screen? Uh, because I think maybe uh, Olivier, uh, can you also sh share your experience uh, on this question? Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, um, indeed, uh, collaboration within Europe uh, between Isaacs uh, is happening at the rail in the form of the help of the agencies. The European agencies help us a lot because they have the contacts, they, they can provide us uh, the contact name within the organization, but also other ISACs. And there we we, uh, we rely on, on the European uh, efforts that are happening with the uh, European Commission and the European Agency for Cybersecurity uh, because they are up to date with uh, which ISAC is being built, which one is actually progressing. And then we have the inter-EU inter ISAC uh, on a yearly basis where we can meet and we can then create contacts and uh, really share information and exchange uh, experience uh, on the go. So that's one of the things we do. And the other aspect we do as well is we let people connect to us uh, and create special groups uh, by getting in touch with us through our mail uh, that we use and soon through the website that we will uh, create as well as a platform thanks to you guys for providing us help on that. So that would be the two key answer I would give to, to, to that question. Okay, thank you. And also for Enisa, um, you um, also uh, built a community for intersectoral uh, ISACs and you have had already meetings with the chairs of different uh, EU ISACs. Uh, can you elaborate on Massimo and Olivier? I think, Vangelis, uh, are you in the meeting right now? Someone of ENISA available? No, um, they're not uh, in the studio right now. So uh, no one of ENISA available. So we move to the next question. How would you deal with scalability at EU level, national versus EU level organization and sharing this in order to keep the ISACs within manageable limits of membership? Um, let's see who can answer uh, this question. Maybe Johan Rambi, are you in the meeting? Yeah, you can put on your uh, camera and please unmute yourself. Yes, I think, yes, Johan. Yes, I'm here. Great to have you here. Um, the scalability and limited of membership, yeah. Uh, that's uh, an, uh, uh, Personally, I think that's a, a dilemma because you don't want a lot of members in uh, a big number of members in within your Isaac. But on the other hand, you are an EU Isaac, and if you are EU Isaac, yeah, that means that all the member states could be member 
uh, in my opinion. So yeah, that's uh, a, a concern that you need to solve within your uh, within your sector. Um, that how many members and critical, let's say, participants uh, should be uh, part of this. Um, I think that is good to create this common view uh, that, that, that we need to um, uh, uniform that. So also from a policy point of view, we need to uh, uh, answer this question um, before we create this ISX and one has 130 members and the other uh, only 20. So that is I think, good to uh, make a, uh, uh, yeah, a uniform way of working. Yes, thank you, Johan. And um, um, we are also curious about uh, Mikael's um, view on this um, question, how to deal with uh, the manageable limits of membership. Mikael, are you um, in the session right now? You mean Miguel from the Commission, you mean? Yes, OK. Oh. Uh, can you share your view on this uh, question? Uh, well, I very much concur with uh, what, with what uh, the, the, the previous reply. I do to achieve the right balance between the su sufficient level of trust uh, that is given by a limited number of people, and then at the same time sufficient representativity. Uh, from the perspective of the Commission, I have said before it, it was said in the session that I was attending uh, number three breakout session. Well, this is very much a bottom up a bottom-up, uh, uh, you know, uh, the ISAC's concept. I mean, this is very much um, something which is of a, of a voluntary nature. Uh, and it was a stress in my session. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be, um, you know, compulsory or anything. That, that the point is well taken. But of course, from the perspective of the commission, the interest is to have, uh, you know, these sectors identified as critical, uh, as in the NIS directive. Uh, which are, you know, properly addressed and there, where the um, communication is, is is flowing there. For that matter, of course, the interest, the interest uh, for, from let's say from a policy perspective, is to have ISACs which are very representative, okay, we, which have a lot of members in them. But at the same time, as it was said before, I do acknowledge that there might, might be this challenge in, uh, in in having creating sufficient trust. Uh, and if you have too many members, it's a bit difficult. Just to conclude, I would say that we have this dilemma also at the overall European level in terms of cybersecurity cooperation. Okay, we want uh, all member states to cooperate in when it comes to cybersecurity and to exchange and what have you. But we do acknowledge that it's quite difficult at times when you have 27 member states with mm. uh, very different, uh, you know, levels of maturity of uh, expertise and so forth. But uh, I would say that the role there of the European Commission, the ambition is to manage this, this difficult balance. With those who are more advanced, they can, they can continue advancing, but not leaving others behind. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Um, coming back to um, um, this question, I would like to ask Nienke Steging to share her experience in setting up uh, the ISEX uh, in the Netherlands and how you dealt with um, the number of participants uh, in specific sectors. Uh, maybe you could share the Dutch approach. Thank you, Anne-Marie. Um, well, the number of people uh, taking part of the ISEX, uh, of course, like we said already, and it's been discussed already, vary. Um, as the ISEX in the Netherlands are on a voluntary basis, um, this means that not everybody is always available to participate. Um, the structure is that you do, but sometimes, you know, duty calls. Um, so that makes uh, um, makes also, you know, the availability uh, sometimes a bit of an issue. Um, but, you know, building trust goes from one to another. And I think that's the way of thinking to go forward. You not only you not start with 27 member states, but you start with one person talking to another person, talking to another person, and those three get together. And then from you go from there, you build trust. Um, and it takes time and it takes a lot of investment time from 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 you know an organization to to start. But I think you cannot sit together and say, now we're a trusted entity. Um, you have to start um from a smaller group and be um 
yeah, and, and be, be that Thank trusted you. community. So yes. I think that would be the answer to building it. I think 27 is a large group. So I already suggested in my breakout session to give it some thought that you have smaller working groups as well and um, have main issues then discussed with 27, but then have smaller um, uh, outcomes uh, gathered with smaller groups. Okay, thank you very much. And also based on your experience with uh, CERT and CERT communities, uh, I will go to the next question and have some of your time, uh, Nienke. Um, but keep it short because this is the last uh, question. How is an ISEC related to a national CERT, CERT? Maybe you can give a short answer uh, on that as well. Sure. Sure, thank you, Anne-Marie. Um, so as I explained in my uh, breakout session, so it's, for some it will be uh, uh, repertory, but um, uh, there's an operational level of information sharing, a tactical level and a strategic level. Um, the operational level is uh, the CSIRT network. It's a national CERT creating national CERT connections as well as international CERT connections. And there goes the EU CERT. Um, uh, as well. Um, ISECs have national ISECs, sectorial ISECs, um, and they also now building EU ISECs, whereas they're already global ISECs as well. Um, so that's the, what I would call um, the um, vertical connection. But what you also need to do is then go through an, um, a horizontal connection where you keep the operational stuff where it should be at the operational level, even though I know CISOs and um, CIOs love to talk about tech, techy stuff, uh, you have to push them into that direction of more um, a tactical level and tactical connected to strategic level uh, kind of discussions. And there comes the strategic level, which is either your board or um, uh, your, um, for instance, within uh, the EU, the cooperation group, which has working groups on strategic issues as well. Okay, thank you, Nienke. And Massimo, Massimo, what's your experience uh, from the perspective of an uh, European energy ISEC on this question? I absolutely agree with the previous uh, uh, remarks on this. Uh, we uh, tried uh, in the past year to establish also a uh, relationship with the NSD cooperation group, uh, also to to let the national officers know that uh, the EI is is assisting and uh, we can we can cooperate with them. At the moment, we don't have a structured uh, uh, structured exchange, uh, but uh, we we are absolutely available and uh, to to cooperate uh, uh, with the agency. Is, uh, and uh, and we are uh, doing this since uh, since the beginning of uh, of our experience. Of course, uh, uh, we are working on a voluntary info sharing, and uh, and we are used to operate more with uh, with private peers uh, uh, more often, I would say, and and uh, with the other operators. Uh, but generally speaking, I think that uh, the, the landscape and the, the overall maturity. Uh, uh, of uh, of the, the organization that are operating in voluntary for sharing is, is increasing, and I think uh, that uh, thanks to the projects uh, and to the contribution of uh, uh, the commissions that that we are uh, experiencing also with uh, uh, the enforcement of the Isaac in this uh, this year, I, I think uh, that uh, our positioning will be more clear and also a cooperation. Of uh, uh, of the Isaac uh, with uh, with the governmental peers will be in the near future. Thank okay. you for the question. Thank you, Massimo. So we're running uh, out of time for this uh, session. So I thank you all for contributing and uh, to uh, the Q and A. Um, and now we go to uh, the session of uh, determining uh, the next topics. Uh, and this is also new for me because we are building a word, word cloud in uh, WorkSup. So, um, so we will see on the screen uh, the topics um, um, who will appear uh, to focus on in uh, the next um, 
sessions. And this is an example of an answer. Uh, so what topics would you find interesting uh, to hear from us? And this is an example. So uh, there will be a, a word cloud and, um, and then um, we will find the topics. But uh, when I look at the screen, uh, there are so far only two answers. Um, so let's see if you will join and I invite you all to join this session in works up. Maybe it's uh, the first time for you as well. So I'm not alone, <laughs> uh, but uh, if you go into the works uh, up environment, um, you can um, add your topics um, to the word cloud and look, it's working uh, because um, I see some activity um, in the works up environment right now. Um, Joseph Stephens, um, he said, we want to have more detailed discussion on how public and private engage with each other on ISEX. So that's uh, a topic um, he wants to address for the next meeting. So uh, I invite you all um, to start typing uh, your topics and specifically for those who can't find it yet on um, in the workshop uh, environment, it is uh, on the button tasks. In, um, I see it's in part three of the agenda. So maybe we can all experience now in works up. Uh, this is a new area for all of us, um, but it's working. That's for sure. <laughs> um, so we start to experience. Uh, I see another one, Jeroen Brouwer. He wants um, to focus on relationships. So other topics now. So Florian, Florian Pennings, um, can we see his question? The roadmap for EU ISEC, what is to be expected and how can we as an industry help? Okay. That's, um, so we could um, come with a clear roadmap for um, the next um, period um, and have the involvement also from the industry part. Oh, I see a growing amount of people joining um, this workshop activity. Teresa Walsh, uh, cross-sector exercising and information sharing. Okay. Now the, the word cloud is growing. Uh, Igor Juko, he says we have to think about healthcare, cybersecurity, and indeed it's an important topic. Also, uh, not only since COVID-19, but it's now on top of everyone's mind. So we open up the word cloud now and see this is the result of your input this afternoon. And I must say, wow, because um, it's really uh, uh, it's the first time for all of us. And um, of course, but, but you see, it works. Um, so it's growing. We have now 95 words. So uh, we will give you back this word cloud. And, um, and maybe we come back to you. Um, to discuss with you how these topics, uh, how we can con contribute to it uh, in the next sessions. So thank you very much. 
And now we're going to the last part, um, and that's your feedback on uh, this online event. So that's the second part of um, this activity in Works Up. And it's working uh, same way. Um, already have some feedback of you. Um, so it's cool platform. Give me more information about ISEX. I did not know much about it. Um, well organized. So thank you. <laughs> um, an excellent event. Platform works really well and breakout discussions works well at the same time. And that's a nice bridge to, oh, we have another one. Very interesting and well organized. I particular like the tools used, works up and teams. Well, we as well, <laughs> a very useful. Okay, thank you all and switching back to Fidel for the last part of this conference. So, Fidel, for the last session uh, today in this conference, well, you see what the feedback is of um, all the participants. So, wh what are your thoughts about that? And um, maybe you uh, give on um, you can reflect on the breakouts and also uh, the conference. Indeed. Thanks, Amari. I think this has been a great event and it's not over yet. If we recapitulate a little bit uh, what we have done, uh, we have had uh, these opening speeches by Miguel and Evangelos, stressing the importance of Isaacs, and then an inspiring Q&A with more, uh, with the right way and with the energy, Isaac. Thanks, Massimo and Olivier. And if we talk about the breakouts, we have talked uh, about the step-by-step -step guide to set up an ISA in the breakout about how to start one and how the early maturity stage of an Isaac involve a lot of talking and discussing. Let's hope this is another example of uh, talking and discussing. In the way of working the uh, breakout, we talk about how that way of working is the operational part of an ISAC, that is very important for the ISAC to be there. And uh, it will contain very normal things, roles, um, tens of reference, it will involve finance, ways of working, etc. Then we have the breakout on information sharing where indeed, for example, this point on public-private relationship were discussed and how to exchange information there. And we also uh, uh, discussed about how it's important to have a like a structure on where to share information. And then the last breakout uh, about uh, an IT platform to actually exchange information that is actually confirmed that is indeed something very important. And what we can see is that uh, the people was more interested in real-time uh, communication, uh, like uh, using chat, than probably other solutions more complex. I also would like to thank our colleagues from PISAC, for PISAC, sorry, uh, for sharing with us uh, the journey they have started, but also what they have learned already and the future plans. I hope there's no technical problem and that you can hear me. Much, yes. And we go to. Um, would you like to continue or? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it working? Yes, it is. Okay, sorry. I saw on a slide. I was confused. Okay. No. Well, yeah. Uh, just to finish, then I would like to reiterate. Then a healthy ISAC is very important for the European Commission. 
we are not alone on this. We're working together and definitely we are working a lot with ENISA in creating and establishing new ISACs and at the same time in supporting the ones that are already there. As Miguel said, we have launched the ISA Facilities Manager, the Empowering EU ISACs project in order to mobilize public and private actors to establish and further develop European level sectoral ISACs, always in collaboration with ENISA. But this is not the only way we support ISACs. There are also funding opportunities under the Connecting Euro facility, and that will be published and, um, uh, and you will receive and you will know more about that really, really soon. We will keep the discussion online and through future events. We also have a virtual networking time in some minutes, so we may still uh, benefit from that and continue the discussion there. Thank to all of you for being here and to engage in this discussion, and also to our speakers and facilitators. Big thanks. Thank you, uh, Fidel. It was uh, loud and clear. And please open all your webcams. We can see everyone at the same time who had a role in this EU ISEC conference 2020 today. Thank you all and a big applause. And now there will be some um, networking uh, left and there's already a lot of activity going on and people who made their profile on uh, in the workshop uh, environment if you didn't um, if you didn't do it uh, right now please um, make your profile and start networking um, the facilitators will be online to answer your questions and um, i think this is a real uh, virtual uh, drink and networking uh, part but it really works uh, for, for those who are not um, uh, connecting, uh, you can read the instructions on the screen, how to connect. And for now, it's time to say uh, bye from the studio. And uh, we hope to connect with you all soon. We can continue uh, the discussion on our LinkedIn group page, which will be emailed to you in the recap. And of course, you can already look it up by going to LinkedIn and search for Empowering EU ISACs. So again, thank you very much for participating. Thank you for playing an active role. Thank you for sharing your experience and to connect with each other. Thank you and see you next time. Um, bye from uh, the whole team and uh, the studio. Um, I'll see you next time. <laughs>